Let's talk about proton pump inhibitors, or PPIs. We can remember proton pump inhibitors by the P's of PPIs. The first P is prazole. We are safe by the suffix. This makes it very easy to recognize PPIs because we just look for that suffix prazole. Some examples are esomeprazole, brand name Nexium, omeprazole, brand name Prilosac, and pantoprazole, brand name Protonix. Again, these all end in the suffix prazole. The next P is for pause acid production. PPIs actually inhibit or stop the proton pump in the stomach from producing excess amounts of acid. The next P is for prevent ulcers. PPIs are prescribed to prevent and treat ulcers like duodenal and gastric ulcers. Ulcers can develop due to acute changes like stress, surgery, or certain medications, which is why PPIs are so commonly ordered in the hospital. The body is enduring lots of stress while in the hospital. It's important to educate your patient that even if they do not take PPIs routinely at home, it's ordered for this reason. The next P is for pylori. PPIs can also help with a bacteria that commonly affects the stomach called H. pylori. PPIs can also help with GERD since this medication decreases stomach acid. The next P is for porous and spongy bones. Long-term use of PPIs can cause bone fractures or even osteoporosis. This is because they cause a decrease in the calcium absorption in the body. The next P is for potential infection. If you want more information like this, you can find it in the Complete Pharmacology Flashcards. It covers everything you need to know in your pharmacology class, but it's presented in a fun and condensed way, no more textbook fluff. You can find the link to purchase in the description below. Acid helps to fight infection in the stomach. So with a decrease in acid from this medication, the stomach is more susceptible to infection especially infections like C. diff, which is a very serious GI infection. Other side effects are nausea, diarrhea, and an upset stomach. Okay, the next P is for prior to meals. You wanna take this medication 30 minutes prior to or before the first meal of the day. You also wanna educate your patient to take calcium and vitamin D supplements to prevent osteoporosis and bone fractures. Remember I said PPIs decrease calcium absorption in the body. The next P is for prevent taking pain meds. While taking PPIs, you want to avoid taking medications that irritate the stomach. These are pain meds like aspirin and NSAIDs like Advil. Let's review the most commonly tested points, which are the P's of PPIs. So remember, the suffix for PPIs is prazole, like omeprazole. PPIs pause or inhibit acid production in the stomach. They are used to prevent ulcers. They are also used to treat a bacterial infection in the stomach called H. pylori. Remember that long-term use can cause porous and spongy bones, which can lead to fractures or osteoporosis. The decrease in acid production can lead to potential GI infections such as C. diff. And be sure to educate your patient to take this medication prior to meals. And to prevent taking pain meds like aspirin or NSAIDs, which irritate the stomach. That's all for PPIs. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more pharmacology tips and tricks like this. Happy studying, future nurses!